My guest tonight was at the Supreme Court for more than two decades. In fact, at the point he had acted consistently as a chief justice and he become the oldest judge on the bench for a long time. But for most people, his rise to fame is rarely connected to that 2012-2013 election petition when he was the president of that particular bench. I know now you know who I'm talking about. Justice will never take well. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much. I hope you are doing well. I also hope so. <laughs> so it's, 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 a, it's a very fantastic <laughs> response from you. Now, you left the judiciary in 2018. Yeah. yeah. For, after so many years, what do you do with your time now? Uh, that's a difficult question because uh, when you are in service, you work to a schedule. Mm -hmm. uh, when you are out of service, everything is at large. <laughs> uh, so, well, briefly, I'm not the outgoing type. Mm. Uh, no, so often I'm at home, uh, except if I have to go and attend to something somewhere. Oh, I see. Oh, yes. Uh, or to church. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, otherwise, I'm just at home. Uh, uh, relating to a, a point raised by, a, a point of criticism raised by one Frank Davis. Yes. Uh, he's a private legal practitioner. Mm -hmm. I was saying that. He's uh, also the head of the Constitutional and Legal Affairs Committee of the NPP. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, and his point is that yes. you misjudged. Yes. Misconstrued. <laughs> yes. And there's that point he also used that you skewed the yes. judgment of <laughs> Judge Equation. <laughs> Yes, and what was his, his standpoint? He was saying that I said mm -hmm. the, the same case had been determined on the merits by the High Court, mm -hmm. and therefore the Supreme Court ought not to re adjudicate. Yes. That's why, luckily, I've brought this uh, printout. There's a ruling dated 20, uh, 13th April 2022 by the Supreme Court. Okay. And that was the time <coughs> the plaintiff in the Judge Quayson case uh, came to the Supreme Court mm. asking for an interim. He filed a writ uh, that this man was still holding himself out as uh, MP, if I may if I recollect well. And wanting an interim injunction mm. to restrain him. Now, in that ruling, <coughs> let me read out. Okay, just no problem. <coughs> introduction. This uh, Kulendi JSC. Yeah. He read the majority opinion. Um, let me go straight to the point where it is shown that. Uh, I could determine the matter on its merits. The judgment of the High Court marked as bit N A N two. Do mm. you follow that? I get you. Uh, this is a quotation from, but I don't want to bore you with lengthy, lengthy this thing. But that alone, mm -hmm. what does it show you? What do you understand by that? Okay, let's go a bit backwards so that uh, <clears throat> uh -huh. background. Okay. Please. The application under consideration is anchored on a writ with the applicant calls to be issued on the 24th of January 2022, invoking the original jurisdiction of this court for the following reliefs. One, a declaration that upon a true and proper interpretation of Article 94, Clause 2, Paragraph A of the Constitution, 1992 of the Republic of Ghana, at the time of filing his nomination form between 5th to 9th October 2020 to contest the 2020 parliamentary elections for the Asin North constituency the first defendant was not qualified as a member of parliament. Mm. 
to a declaration that upon a true and proper interpretation of Article 94.2, Clause A of the Constitution 1992 of the Republic of Ghana, the decision of the second defendant to permit the first defendant to contest parliamentary elections in the Asin North constituency, when the third defendant owed allegiance to a country other than Ghana, is inconsistent with and violates Article 94.2A of the Constitution of the Republic of Ghana, 1992. Three, a declaration that upon a true and proper interpretation of Article 94.2A of the Constitution, 1992 of the Republic of Ghana, the election of the first defender as member of parliament for the Asin North constituency was unconstitutional. Mm. Fourth, a declaration that upon a true and proper interpretation of Article 94.2A of the Constitution 1992 of the Republic of Ghana, the swearing in of first defendant as member of parliament for the Asin North constituency was unconstitutional, null and void and of no legal effect. Five, any further orders and all directions as the court may deem fit to give effect or enable effect to be given to the orders of the court, unquote. Then the relevant antecedents to this application can be summarized from processes filed as follows. The first respondent was elected. First respondent is Jackie Christian. Okay was elected member of parliament for the Asin North constituency on 7th, December 7th, 2020. After the election of the first respondent, the applicant on 30th, December 2020, petitioned the High Court Cape Coast and contended that at the time of the filing of parliamentary nomination forms by the first respondent, he held Canadian citizenship and was therefore in violation of Article 94.2a of the Constitution and other electoral laws. The applicant sought various declaratory reliefs, an order annulling the election, perpetual injunction, restraining the first respondent from holding himself out as member of parliament elect for the Asin North constituency, and an order directed at the third respondent to conduct fresh parliamentary elections in the Asin North constituency. On 6th January 2021, the High Court granted an interlocutory injunction restraining the first respondent from holding himself out as the member of parliament elect for the Asin North constituency within the central region and further from presenting himself to be sworn in as member of parliament for Asin North constituency as such until the final determination of the substantive petition filed against him by the applicant. A copy of this ruling is attached to the applicant's affidavit in support of this application as Exhibit N, M, A, N, 3. Subsequently, on 28th July 2021, the High Court gave judgment after trial in favor of the applicant and declared the election of the first respondent as null, void, and of no legal effect whatsoever. Mm. Further, the High Court granted an order of perpetual injunction against the first respondent from holding himself out as a member of parliament for the Asin North constituency. Agreed by the judgment of the High Court, the first respondent appealed to the Court of Appeal Cape Coast, seeking to set aside the judgment of the High Court. It is against this background that the applicant commenced the present suit and has mounted this application deposing at paragraph seven, eight, and nine, these are for the interlocutory yeah. injunction. So, yeah. but you've seen. I get your point. Yes. So I don't know. This our country. It's not my work. I can forward this ruling to you online. Mm -hmm. You can read it a million times. The See? suggestion was that perhaps you are not. You had not read the judgment, so yes. you were being misled by other people into thinking that the, yes. the judgment was not in tandem with uh, the principles that you actually espoused? Well, I wish you were here. Um, my point, mm -hmm. and it's sufficient for the point I was making, mm -hmm. that the Supreme Court, you know, finally they gave judgment yeah. on the matter, mm -hmm. still declaring that at the time he filed, uh, 
Grayson filed his nomination papers. He was a Canadian citizen, was not qualified. Yeah. And the Electoral Commission aired in. So his election was not in one. I have yeah. that judgment. Yeah. So what, 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 what is the difference? It, it declared the judgment in the terms of this um, high court judgment, the relevant parts I've quoted mm -hmm. to you. Um, I have that judgment. Um, I can bring it to you. No, I get that. Yes. Yeah. So I don't know, whatever. You see, look, one thing. That's why some of us don't move around and the kind of politics that has entered some people's minds and changes their systems to such an extent that there's no respect for truth, morality, fear of God, anything, except to attain a political objective, fair or foul. This is the kind of mindset that leads to these sort of things. Mm. And I'm seriously against that. That is the trust of my life. Mm. Yes. So you were not skewed? You, you did not misjudge? Where? I mean, you, you did I'm, not misconstrue? At all. At all. Well, all I was saying was that they purported to re-adjudicate the same case which the High Court had adjudicated. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't determine the same matter all over again, twice. Mm -hmm. The same parties, the same issues. You know, and he, I think he was trying to say that in their uh, writ in the Supreme Court was about interpretation. Mm -hmm. That's why I say that judgment, uh, bring it. They, they went the whole terrain from the time he filed his papers to the, um, the time of the election and, you know, the, the declaration in his favor that he was elected. They went all over that and came to the conclusion that since at the time of filing, between 5th and 9th October 2020, he had not received his certificate of renunciation of Canadian citizenship, he could not have been accepted to contest. And therefore, his election was null and void. That is, so I don't know what this man is trying to say. Well, I don't want to use hashtag normally. <laughs> yeah. I, I get your point. It, yeah. it just sounded to many people yeah. that he believes and he's yeah. of the view that, yeah. no, you, you got it wrong. You, yeah. you probably did not know what you were talking about uh -huh. and that you had not spent as much time. And he kept yeah. on insisting yeah. that people should read the judgment uh -huh. and that you had not spent as much time perusing it, uh -huh. mindful of your competence in the law. I'll bring that judgment. I have it. I think I can bring it. But is, is, is it that people do not understand or we do these things deliberately? That's what I'm saying. I mean, look, um, I don't like to talk about people, mm -hmm. but try to uh, know a bit about the political background of people mm. when they are talking on issues. Okay. And you can see whether it, that background influences and directs what they say. I may be wrong, I've been a private lawyer and a judge for many years. Politics, I went into it very briefly and opted out because of the nature of it. I see. I've said this on platforms before. Now, look. Um, so, so, which party were you presented there? That time it was called Popular Front Party, which oh, is now the, yes. That's, the no, no, that's part of the NPP's uh, antecedents, right? Yeah. From, from the. UP, yeah. then the front divided, right. the UNC and the PFP yeah, yeah. came in. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. that's it. So you're on the PFP side? PFP. Oh, that's interesting. Victor Usu was our. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes. That was the time. Okay. Yes. And. Uh, so ideologically, you are NPP? Not now. Oh, no, I'm talking about ideologically. After. You, no, when you, you are center right. Why you say ideologically? It oh, it didn't matter at the time. No, at that time. Mm -hmm. I was. Oh, center right. But when I moved out, that was the end of it. Oh, okay. So. But your ideals, your ideas are not center right. My ideas, I, I don't know these terms too much, but 
My idea As is... your ideological leaning. No, I'm coming. Let me tell you. Then you can subsume. Oh, okay. Mine is pro-good governance for the interests of the people. Mm. Whatever system is doing that, that's mine. That's idea. okay with you. Yes. No, I get the point because, you know, some people, some people... To that extent... Yeah. Now, of course, I mean, the, the, the conversations moved on. Yeah. But you, you made some very critical questions. Yeah. You raised some very critical questions about how the judiciary is functioning in the whole. Yeah. You, you, you talked about the perceived bias. Yes. You yes. also talked about the independence and yes. the yes. pressures that are put on the independence. Yes. yes. Now, the Afrobarometer report mm. says, in fact, yeah. if you believe the CDD's Afrobarometer, yeah. The trust in the judiciary is at an all-time low. Mm -hmm. How can we rebuild that trust in the judiciary? What can be done immediately to deal with that problem? Well, it's a constitutional problem. Um, is, it, is it the appointment part? Yes, the appointment process. As I explained in my presentation, you want the judiciary to be independent. The constitution states too. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, on the Judicial Council, which recommends justices yeah. to be appointed, so you have the Attorney General and four nominees of the President sitting there, taking part in the proceedings of, uh, as to who should be uh, presented for appointment to the Supreme Court. Where is the independence of the judiciary? You have the executive so strongly present there, and that's why I quoted a passage from that table. I said, with those people, they can influence mm -hmm. the course of the appointment. And that's political influence. Okay, that's an interesting development. Oh, yes. Because you do recall yes. that there was a time yes. that Prof. Sarimona Tukba had raised yes. the issue to do with who appointed who yes. and how they ended yes. up voting, yes, yes, essentially. Yes. Yes. And you judges were up in arms against him. <laughs> I remember I wasn't there. Um, but if I was there, I probably would have come. Because when I talk, they would simply say, because it's my... Yeah, we are related to uh -huh. him. No, but the substance of the matter yes. is what you're raising. Yes. How then do we do it? Should we remove the president's appointee from the judicial co com committee, judicial council? Oh, yes. What are they there for? The separation of powers. The executive should be separate from the, the judicial arm so that they are independent can do their work freely. Then you bring them there to police their, their appointments from the beginning. Is that how to achieve an independent judiciary? Mm. And apart from that, you see, if you look at the present structure of the Judicial Council, you have the Chief Justice as chairman. You have a representative of the Supreme Court and the various other yeah. lower courts. Um, the, I think the magistrates and circuits, they have one representative. But the other uh, courts, Supreme Court, Court of Appeal, High Court, they have a representative each. Mm -hmm. You have the Judge Advocate General from the Armed mm -hmm. Forces. You have the Director of the uh, Police Legal Directorate. Yeah. You have the Editor of the Law Reports. You have two members of the Bar Association. And then you have these four presidential nominees, and the attorney general. Here's the composition. Now, if you look at it realistically, who can stand up to the a chief justice who wants to do the president's bidding? I mean, just for the sake of I, I get you. argument. Who can stand up to him? Is the attorney general and the, the four nominees? They will certainly try to push for the president, isn't it? I get your point, but would it I'm, be I'm fair? Coming. Okay. As for the other members, two members of the bar, it also depends <laughs> on their <laughs> inclinations. <laughs> you know, there are only two anyway. Mm -hmm. And then, apart from the representative of the Supreme Court, it also depends on how he stands in relation to the Chief Justice. If it's not independent minded, he may like always to side with the Chief Justice. As for the others, they are below the chief <laughs> Supreme Court, so, you know, they are promotion and all those things depend on. Uh -huh. So is it fair when someone suggests that yeah. the courts are not balanced and that the courts are consistently being packed? Is it fair? 
Uh, I would just say consistently because, um, uh, okay, let's take it from 1992. Nine, 7 January nineteen. Forgive me, but I'm talking about more recent phenomena. And, ah, and the person okay. I'm trying to quote here yes. is the former President Mahama who says that yes. we should be seeking to balance the courts, yes. not only because um, um, it's not balanced, yes. but also because a lot more people who are lawyers within the NDC should be interested in getting on the, uh, what called the bench. Mm. Is it a fair assessment of the structure of the court? Mindful of what you just told me. Well, um, I think... Uh, in a broad sense, yes, because, um, you see, the courts belong to the public. Yeah. That's, that thing should never be lost sight of. Mm. See, everything in the state belongs to the people. Every other person in any position is a trustee for the people. Yeah. And so the people, that's why court proceedings are held in public, mm. so that they public can follow the proceedings and assess things for themselves, mm -hmm. see how justice is administered, whether it's fair or not. And so, um, I mean, there's a big public outcry about the, uh, the nature of the Supreme Court as it stands. They feel that it's politically tilted to the MPP. You are a media man. I think you can, you, you, you can see a lot of those sentiments hmm, expressed on social media. That's why to the extent they call them unanimous FC. Is it fair? Well, I'm coming. Well, the point I'm making is when the public loses confidence or they start complaining, you don't just push it aside because when it's not, when nothing is happening, they, they, they won't do that. Mm. Huh? They won't do that. Why is it that they were not having that impression of raising those flags earlier? And there's an all-time low. Trust is at an all-time low. I'm coming. So, on the whole, but the National Security Minister also even came out to talk on this point. Yes, he ago. said that it's, it's not good for security of the nation. Okay. The courts are seen to be given a judgment that's Unanimous. Okay. I mean, that's the right word to use, actually. Okay. okay. So, you see, public perception uh, um, in your private estimation may be right or wrong, but it, it, it has effect all the same. So, who should deal with it? I'm coming. Um, so, when it has effect, you try to diffuse that effect. Mm -hmm. well, as I said, those sentiments don't arise out of a vacuum. Mm -hmm. huh? And to win the public confidence, uh, they must feel that their judgments are sound and um, not politically jaundiced. Mm -hmm. So if there's a big outcry like this, uh, something has to be done about it. You see, the bad thing about this country Something bad is happening for political reasons. They would like to push it under the carpet. No, oh, not so and so and so. They did it when the cry about corruption was rising and rising. What happened when Anas went in? What happened? They found judges. My cousin and two or three other guys, when they raised it, the courts banned them. Yeah, they were prevented from practicing. Shortly after that, what happened? That's where when investigations revealed that some were taking all the other things. Clearly, the judicial corruption scandal was revealed. Clearly, yes. clearly. Mm -hmm. That's why when it doesn't pay to gamble with the truth, where it will surface mm -hmm. and can cause damage. Now, so uh, mm -hmm. on the whole, that perception, well, uh, is there. I didn't cause it, mm -hmm. but it's there. Uh, and so Mahama can talk about it. The only point where I disagree with him is um, he should have gone further to say that you, the NDC lawyers, should be getting ready, those who are experienced and independent-minded, so that they come and will not give the same impression okay. 
Uh -huh. But if it is just politically balancing the equations, that's not helpful. Then why don't you leave this? Is it just because you also want the opportunity to, <laughs> to do the same thing? Or influence the judiciary? Uh, that doesn't advance anything. I, I get your point. Yes. Now, we're talking about unanimous FC. Yes. That's a terrible title, isn't it? Well, I didn't create it. I get your point, but yes. my point is, how, how, how do we... Is it fair to the judiciary that we only take some key cases and yes. use it to brand them as yes. always ruling this particular direction? But how do you assess... So do you take the minor things to assess in this situation? You go for the minor, minor things. Mm. Now, those are not the things which affect the national system of uh, operation. But is it being justified criticism, in all fairness? That's why I'm saying that I'm not the public. Yes. The public are entitled to their views. I'm not mm. the public. Mm. But that is what is what there. What they are thinking about. They are strongly convinced of it. Now, let me raise an issue with you that's very recent. And I'm saying that it has to be dealt with because just like the corruption thing that was being swept under the carpet, so and so and so, people banished. What happened? When the expose brought it Yes. Up. Okay. Now, a recent controversy. Yes was when people had filed petitions against the EC yes. on an injunction they were seeking. Yes. Yes. And the Chief Justice, we are told yes. that the register could not schedule because the Chief Justice was out of town. Mm -hmm. And that she had to wait. When she came, the scheduling was after the registration exercise. Mm -hmm. Well, you see, in that scenario, even as a layman, how do you find it? Uh, it was surprising to some of us because okay. we have not seen that happen. Good. Perhaps because we are not also legal officers who had also been, been, been in the courts consistently. Yeah, but if it was something that uh, could be fairly done or properly done, why is it that it was never happened? What has been the standard practice? No, it's not a question of practice. Article 1. Um, Four, four, six, or so. The Constitution never brings anything really mm -hmm. to you. It's clear. And that, I've dealt with that in my speech also. That when the, uh, <clears throat> in the absence of the, 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 the Chief Justice, or if the Chief Justice is unable to act for any reason, the, ne the next, the most senior justice acts until the Chief Justice is able to resume. The functions. That is a clear constitutional provision. And in Masi, when you read it, I say, look, some chief justices, to, oh, Africa, this thing is there, but they will look among the judges and think that, oh, these are close to me, the others maybe are pro here, and so. So if the most senior is not in, uh, close to him or her, some of them, when they are traveling, they will swap and hand over secretly to somebody who is not the most in the back, close to them, to be running affairs. Okay. Yes. And even if they will give things to the next person, they are just inconsequential things, I mean, petty, petty things, mm. you see. And I noticed, I, look, Redu suffered that thing, Redu, before he became Chief Justice. Whenever um, Aban traveled, mm -hmm. I didn't want to mention it, but let's uh, do it for clarity. His cousin, Ampia, was virtually the acting chief justice in his absence. And not the next senior most. Redu was the next most senior. He was always at that. OK. And I remember vividly, on one occasion, Redu thought this was too much. Uh, there was uh, the annual uh, judges' conference. And it's normally addressed by the Chief Justice, flanked by the Justice of the Supreme Court. And Ampia was going to do it. Redu went in there and said, no, he is the next most senior. He is to do this. And I think Ampia had a, a speech for him to He said, no, he will read his own speech. I see. For that. Except in this case, the, the subsequent justification is that yeah. this was during break. This was yes. during the judicial break. Yes. So that case could not be listed during the judicial break. Oh, I don't think so. Uh, don't you have vacation judges in the high court? 
vacation, urgent matters can be dealt with during vacation. That's a mm. settled practice of the, the legal system. Urgent matters. And even, I think I never do, there were vacation, call of a few vacation judges, he mm. introduced that. It's not illegal to sit during the vacation. And even with the consent of the parties, you can try a substantive case during the vacation. Even at the Epis Court? Oh, why not? It's the same rule. It's not the same vacation. Is it possible the rules have changed? Well, I've left since, as I've told you, I've closed my mind. So. <laughs> I, I, I get you, because that's what we're told. Yes. Now, I, I need to fast pace this conversation. Yes. The other points that have been raised yeah. in there yeah. is that you basically took a mirror to the judiciary yes. and tried to show it as having so many defects that ought to be fixed. Yes. Which is fine and all good. I don't know. But, yes. but some say, yes. even when you were part of the judiciary, it was not perfect. But, I mean, it's a strange thing to hear. So we shouldn't strive for perfection? Or is that, is that the implication? Thinking. That's a serious argument to, to make? No, the judiciary is to be partially independent or wholly independent. Of course, wholly is our aspiration. Now, the argument then is that it's because you are not in there, that is why you are criticizing it. And that it's not proper for a former judge to be doing that kind of criticism. Not proper. Yes. Who says it's not proper? What 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 is there to 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 say that I cannot? And that this for don't I have freedom of uh, expression under the constitution? And these current colleagues of yours or previous colleagues of yours could equally you could have engaged them on some of these pertinent issues without making it public or perhaps subjecting Why them to Why not? This. That's the trouble I, I stand against. Mm. Sweeping important matters from the public eye when they are the owners of the institution to hide things from them. For what reason? Are you the owner of the institution or the people? They should know the facts concerning their institution. Don't, I don't like these kinds of things. Interesting. Now, reflection. I mean, you've been in this country for quite too long for you to understand the judiciary more, most, that most people in this. What can we do beyond the Supreme Court changes that you just suggested to make sure that our judiciary is trusted more? What can we do? Um, well, what can you do? <laughs> it's an institutional question. Mm. But as I said in my presentation, I'm quoted from that table. <clears throat> Institutional independence is different from personal independence. If you don't take care to look critically at people's backgrounds and their moral and whatnot standings, and uh, you bring them down, some are ready to pander to mm -hmm. the wishes. I mean, the provision is there, uh, giving them the independence. Because people have complained about the kind of judges we are appointing now. Some of them, of course. Um, like I quoted from <laughs> 69, yeah. when almost the most junior high court judge was brought to the Supreme yeah. Court over and above Azukrab and Co. Mm -hmm. And Azukrab, Apalu, they were the most seniors. Yeah. They became, I think, the fourth and fifth mm -hmm. <laughs> on the uh, order of uh, seniority. Yeah. And they brought the equivalent as a circuit court judge to be chief justice over them. Mm -hmm. That was because the Salah case. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. As the crab wasn't even on that panel, but of course, because he belonged to the same class or time with mm -hmm. Abadu, probably. They, you know, this sort of thing. They start today. It's only, uh, you know, it's, it's so starts unless it's treated it to faster and faster and faster and, 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 and become, become worse, worse by the day. Uh huh. That is it. So uh, this one, um, first of all, for anything to be done, uh, it must be by constitutional amendment. Oh, we should. Um, the only other way is moral talking, but you see. If you go on that tangent, these people are all mature and well... Developed people. Yes. They know yes. left from right. Oh, they know yes, what sure, is right. Oh, sure, 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 sure. Anyway. So that tangent is out. So like I said, 
in Kenya, when they were they satisfied with the Supreme Court, they simply dissolved the Supreme Court and ordered everybody to reapply. And people, different people could apply. And then that's how Georgina Wood went there. They picked judges from the Commonwealth mm -hmm. jurisdictions to, to interview and select. Okay. That's how they, they solved that problem. Are we at a point where we should do the same in Ghana? Well, that's, my answer is as good as yours. I want to know yours because you have the experience. What? I am of no use to, to oh, this. No, 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 no. My you, views are very material. You are, you are very well informed as a journalist. You yeah. are even more well informed about <laughs> uh, happenings and uh, okay. events than, than me. I, I'm wrapping up the conversation with these um, questions about country Ghana. Yeah. Your reflections when you sit back, are we heading the right direction? We have a domestic debt exchange. We are before the IMF. We are, of course, the economy has difficulties. Mm. Are we headed the right direction? Well, I'm not an economist, mm -hmm. but as a layman, you just suppose this against the past mm -hmm. orders. And certainly, if everybody, virtually everybody, is complaining about how she, you can't say that. We are mm -hmm. The president himself is required less. You, the media people, misreported him. And he acknowledged that things are difficult, but somebody is coming who will mm -hmm. make things better. So this is not an issue for debate. Our democracy, is it thriving? Thriving? Is it developing a direction that we should get it? Is it leading to the yields, the dividends that democracies lead to? Well, as of now, uh, you look at them. Um, uh, you see, the judiciary is the hope mm. of the democracy, and uh, there's great outcry against it. So, um, when the center is not holding, what do you think can transfer? Mm. You look at. Um, Virtually all the other institutions of government there are serious complaints. The EC, you know. Uh, parliament, you've seen how. It's but we almost have an almost hand parliament. Yes. Which is an improvement, isn't it? It's supposed to be. Is this so in practice? Is it not? Is this so? <laughs> well, um, it's not a legal question. Uh, I, I get your point, oh, but that's why I'm taking your views on what's happening in the country generally. Oh, but as I told you, I don't. I as an elderly wrong. statesman of this country with distinguished experience and competence. Oh, oh. You see, when you're on the bench, your life cycle is very mm. limited. And I'm living much the same way. <laughs> okay, I see. <laughs> I, I get the point. <laughs> now, the questions about. Um, functioning and developing a judiciary that's fit for purpose. Yes. And even a system or a Ghanaian society that yes. can deliver. Yes. Your reflections, what can we do to improve the lot of Ghanaians in general? Oh, I think that's what I was saying. That, uh, you know, for anything to go well, the management system must be sound and oper operational, mm. you know? Uh, so, if the institutions are not free and sound, you can't expect sound results. Um, uh, and that's why I was saying that we need to reform the constitution drastically. In what specific ways? Reducing the powers of the president. Has too many hands in the appointment process. You can't say people should be free and he is appointing you and you are virtually under him. Uh, Which specific ones would you think he should be uh, stopped from appointing? The judiciary, the EC, uh, Shiraj. Um, uh, you see, it's not necessary. If you say these institutions should be independent, you don't let the president come in in any form or shape. Okay. 
Well, even if he's at the receiving end, but once he's part of it, he'll know how to. If he's that type, he'll still know how to. <laughs> you know, work his way through. Uh, so for me, the judiciary, like uh, it's happening in uh, Kenya and in Britain now, there's a special uh, appointment judicial commission. Mm -hmm. Entirely independent. I don't like the way the English one is composed of you know, men and so forth. But it works. But they are under nobody's listing. Control. And they do the selections. People apply. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, I think their topmost lawyer applied <laughs> to go to a Supreme Court. But he didn't get. Mm -hmm. But now he's there. <laughs> he's mm -hmm. right again. It paint him, but he's there now. And he's very good. You know, uh, what we should avoid is giving the. You see, power is uh, very attractive. Mm -hmm. That's why they say power corrupts. Absolute, absolute power. power corrupts. Absolutely. Uh, you know. And um, so if you tempt somebody with, with power, who is already, especially those. Uh, elected to presidential, they feel that ah, they have the the mandate. Nobody has that mandate. Mm -hmm. They have the largest mandate, so they think that. Uh, that's why in Israel, Netanyahu, uh, you know mm -hmm. what's happening here. Yeah. Say that the Supreme Court, you know, it's not an elected body, and they try to, you know, review so and so. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. you know, just because. Uh, he's facing all sorts of charges. <laughs> you know, that's the interpretation some people have given to it. Uh -huh. So, uh, people in the executive positions who always like to have control uh, uh, according to their own likeness. And that temptation uh, or even impropriety must be, re must be removed. Look, uh, why should uh, a president appoint uh, the top com uh, uh, commanders of the army? He's a layman. They have, it's a professional body. They have, them have their own body, and they can make their appointments and so forth. Maybe there should be some uh, body for appeals too, if things are, are not really going the way they should uh -huh. be. You mentioned the AC too. What? The AC. You no, know, recently a gentleman was appointed to the commission, yeah. and he raised proud, very serious complaints about how uh, where the person is coming from, yes. how the person's impact is supposed to be yes. on the court and all yes. of that. Yes. In fact, people had even even civil society groups have said he was biased, he was partisan, mm -hmm. and all of that. Mm -hmm. Is yeah. it a major concern that should be addressed? What, what do you think about that? You've also heard these things, and you are very mature and well informed. What yeah. is your. Uh, except that under these circumstances, yes. before you, I cannot have an opinion of any. Oh, no, but I'm status. giving you the, the chance to have an opinion. <laughs> yes, yes, sir. Yes. No, it's because yours is what is no, very no, 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 powerful. No, 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 no. I mean, I mean in, in what sense? Mm -hmm. Look, journalists are better informed <laughs> than <laughs> probably anybody else. Mm. You are the failures on the ground. Because this is you, more you, to you, do with. Constitutional qualifications as yes. against the independence of an institution yes. and the trust people repose in that institution. Yes. That's what I'm asking you this question. No, but the constitutional provisions are just to operate a, a, a system to, uh, to serve the people. Mm -hmm. So what, what is uh, special in the provisions? It is how it is exercised. And everybody uh, can form an opinion. First of all, is it inherently healthy to bring somebody who uh, can be set, you know, on this, just at a glance, that mm -hmm. this person be slanted. Is it, is it advisable or fair to do that? With what intent would you choose such a person over others who, I mean, let us, uh, you know, always uh, be direct issues. Mm. Yeah. Do we have decent men in Ghana? Oh, sure. But I've extolled some of them. Yes, I, I get you. I couldn't get the full list. Mm. Oh, yes. Mm. Mm. They are there. But they don't have the power. Mm. That's always the trouble. But 
uh, I have confidence in uh, this uh, but this is if it's the country or what those, uh, I think I list that somewhat. Okay. And I don't know most of them, but uh, a lot of them that I listed, I took them from, they brought the action uh, against Dominibus. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. That's where I saw So those list. are the people that you actually picked so, up. And it means that they are committed to that extent that they can go to the Supreme Court and challenge. And that's what should be happening. A lot of that. And when you have a, a strong and independent-minded uh, court, oh yes, a lot of these things can be upheld. With time, people will know that they can't be that powerful. Mm. And that is the constitution which rules everybody. And then things will be will, will, will fall into that. I had an engagement with um, Justice of Akufu. Yes. It was an interesting conversation. The yes. tail end of it, she told me that she speaks out more now because of the, yes. the need. <laughs> yes. Because she feels that her generation has disappointed the younger generation mm. and that they should try and correct the ways or mm. make sure that things are done right now. Mm. Mm. Do you have a similar feeling? Oh, definitely. Definitely. And that's why I said we have to restructure. Mm. You know, everything. Restructuring is with that intent to make things go well. And when that is happening, the people grow up into, into it. And they, they think and live in it, you know. But when it is like this, uh, look, well, I mean, young people are out there. I mentioned it at the lecture. Some are having very good qualifications. Uh, they are looking for jobs. What happens? Uh, is the army recruitment policy? We know what happens. Protocol. Mm. You know, somebody is not fit. He goes in because he's connected to somebody high up. Somebody is tomorrow. He can't get. How can you run a healthy system this way? How can the people be happy? Corruption. And then the youth, when they become dejected and they feel that, oh, this is the only way, they also go into it becomes cultural practice now. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah? If you are looking for some, hey, I tell you, hey, you look for somebody who can. <laughs> and, uh, and you continue that uh, wrongdoing. Mm -hmm. Fight against corruption and the, and, the, and the fight against illegal mining, that's Kalamse. Yes. From where you sit, yes. are we doing well? Our current fight. Well, uh, uh, it's it's, uh, it's a large terrain. I uh, mm -hmm. can't know where and where these things are happening, mm -hmm. and to what extent they've been brought down, and to what extent they are still here. But um, that's why sometimes I like your TV station. Uh, I hardly watch TV, but. A friend of mine, the one that played cast with him. Okay. Oh, so, so, so he put it on. And then Joy FM also. And there was a, a feature uh, program on this guy I'm saying. Yeah. And I like the person who spoke on it. He didn't sweep the facts under the carpet. He said, oh, um, it's still going on in the areas where I portrayed. The deep excavations and what not. He even went as far as to say that uh, they've been, I think, either destroying some excavators or impounding mm -hmm. them or something. But there are no go areas. And he mentioned it's your own program, you can go and cross check. Mm -hmm. So one uh, excavator or one mining area belonged to some uh, politi politician. Mm -hmm. And uh, there they can go. It's your own listing there. Yeah. Yes. So um, I, I don't know in how many places, but uh, uh, the chiefs complain a lot, and the chiefs are spread all over. And so it means it's still a, a big problem. Mm. Yeah. And oh, that's a big 
worry to me. Because what does it mean? That the whole Ghanaian state is unable to eradicate this menace. Eh? It's, it, it hasn't got the capacity. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine that? It's okay. Yeah. How possible? You have the army, you have the police. Um, they can't put down this menace. The whole state of Ghana, wonderful. Let me confess, when I was on the bench, and this thing, you know, as I was on the bench, I was coming back. One day I was going to Kumasi, and I used to hear that, hey, the water bodies are polluted. Yeah. Mm. Then uh, on the way to Kumasi, I saw some river flowing as a, as a tunnel or something. Mm -hmm. Hey, clay. What's the water? Yeah, the color. Yeah. Clay. Hey. So when I came, I said, oh, this is a reality. So I started telling my colleagues from time to I said, look, Normally, judges don't act on their own, but we should just sit down and see the country dying like this. Mm -hmm. Let us summon the people who should have put down this menace, and order them to do it. Well, I didn't get support, but I understand that I was going too far. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's interesting. Oh, yes. But because, you see, look, the common law is the handiwork of the judges, yeah. and it, it, it is not static. It is fine-tuned yeah. to, you know, uh, redress societal uh, challenges and evils, you know. It's, it's a judgment law. So, can always, but, you know, step by step, you know. That's true. Uh, uh, so, yeah. I felt that maybe this was going to, uh, and then my retirement came, so. Uh, Do you think politically that you can fix this problem of God, I'm saying? Well, say political leadership. I see the people in the ministries, the minister for lands. And, of course, we have ministers. We have mining inspectors. We have regional districts. Mm -hmm. Those people are put in charge of it to deal with it effectively. <laughs> well, so let me ask you a rhetorical question. So if they were doing this, would it be there? You think it would have been there? Even the president put his presidency on the line. Yes, uh, a statement is a statement. And yeah. yet it's still happening. Well, he will be the, in the best position to explain why. In relation to the statement he made, it's still like that. Mm. Uh, he's in charge of the security apparatus and all that. Uh, I can give a very assessment. <laughs> Finally on corruption. Yes. What can we do to step up the fight against corruption? If we have an OSP office already functioning, mm. yes, or doing some work, we have, uh, if the president says, it gives me all the money to the relevant stations of state mm. to do the job that they are supposed to do. That's the independent bodies are supposed to fight corruption. More than ever, they've gotten money to fight it. But if you check our Transparency International rating, mm. We are not making any improvement. Well, first of all, have you cross-checked whether the funding is actually on the ground? Okay. That's well, when Martin Amidu was leaving, he said he was financially handicapped mm -hmm. his office. Although they said, was it 80 million cities had been voted by his office? So, um, these matters, you can even collect the facts better. I mm. don't have the means. Uh, and it's just not um, funding. It's the real independence of the people mm -hmm. in charge. Although people are hard on this OSP, I think he's trying to, to do well in some way. I think he's, he's trying. Yeah. I don't know the challenges he's facing. I'm not in his office, so I don't know. But I, I think he's trying. Uh, maybe there are some bottlenecks which mm -hmm. he <laughs> can best uh, explain. Uh, explain. Uh, but the fact that there is a large 
a very big hue and cry about corruption. Uh, so that uh, uh, the fight against it uh, hasn't gone far enough. And that's why I say public opinion uh, has to be respected. These uh, perceptions don't just uh, germinate from nowhere. No, people are not mad, just except they are politically jaundiced. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, start saying things they don't see or they don't believe in. But, you know, when, on the whole, there uh, are so many people, there's a big outcry about something. I'll give you the example of yeah. the corruption that was alleged and how people were banned from their courts and what was the fallout. Hmm. When they exposed it happened. Yes. Now, I'm concluding this conversation yeah. with the. Uh, it might be unfair to you because you are retired now. Yes. But, yes. you know, yeah. maybe when you are in active. No, ask any question. Me, oh, because it's, yeah. it's important. Yes. Now that it is important for people to know yeah. how much dollars people have in their bedrooms. Yes, yes. That question is equally important to Justice Atiguan. Right? Yes. How much have we kept in your bedroom? You can go in now. Go in now. And I can produce. <laughs> I had to restrain myself. Uh, I think as from last month or so. I've been living on overdraft to top up my pension from month to month. Really? Oh, yes. For my Supreme Court judge? Yes, but I won't blame it on the state because the pension, uh, I wouldn't say it's too bad. But you know, in the African context, you come from a family. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are the I, uh, it's a large family. Uh, mm -hmm. They are very shareholders of your salary. <laughs> uh, so that's what I can say. Yeah. We should continue with this conversation in the future. Uh -huh. But for now, I'm very grateful for your time this evening. <laughs>